Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCD Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video we're going to be talking about week one of the Road to Nationals season, what heroes won, how many Road to Nationals, and just talk about the meta as a whole, give you a full breakdown, and yeah, we'll get right into it. If you're new to the channel, welcome, thank you so much for stopping by, hopefully you enjoy your stay. If you're a long-standing supporter, thank you so much as always. Feel free to check out the Discord down below as well as the channel membership. We're trying to get to 75 channel members by the end of the month. So if you've watched a couple videos, you like the content, and you want to support in a different way, feel free to check out the membership. We have several tier levels with different benefits for each really good time. So we'll get right into it. So the 17 different heroes won in a road to nationals in the first week, which is pretty good, right? Road to nationals is not as... Uh, there's not as many as like ProQuest season, at least from what I'm seeing. Um, so, you know, you're not going to quite have as wide of a spread. But having 17 heroes win, and I'll show the heroes that didn't win here in a second, um, is a pretty great feat. But the biggest surprise of all, as you can see on the screen, Kano was the winningest hero in week one of Road to Nationals which I don't think anyone was expecting. Most people had Kano around their B-tier area, I would say maybe C, but probably B-tier area is a good fit for where Kano was expected to be. It was expected to be a good deck, but week one really gave Kano two things that allowed it to be a kind of set up to be a good deck and win a lot of events. One is, I think a lot of people probably didn't respect the, the Arcane Barrier as much as they should have week one. People probably sided it out, which gave Kano an opening in, in a couple games for sure. That usually happens at the start of a meta. Um, it always gives Kano an advantage. And the second one is we're in really of a mid-range meta right now. We do have some spiky, like, can be, like, mid-range to aggro decks like KO. Um, Ninja can float around. Um, we have decks like Leviah. But overall, we're in a really mid-range base meta with Victor, um, with Bravo, with Kasai, right? The fastest decks we have in the format right now are really KO, Leviah, maybe Empress Dromai, and um, Ninjas. But it's kind of, you know, hit or miss Have you run into all of those. So Kano is able to take advantage of those mid-range decks to have a certain ceiling on what they're trying to do. And it gives him time to set up the combo and really, you know, just go to the races. So Kano being first, although not expected, is makes sense, right? It's not like a crazy surprise to me. Um, we're going to have to see. We'll, we'll look at the hero breakdown here really fast. I just set this up really qu quick so you could see it and read it. Um, but Kano being first with 12 wins, 12 uh, complete wins in Road Nationals. And if we sum these up, 76 total events. Um, so in 76 events, Kano won 12 of them. You know, that's over 10%. Pretty easily over 10%, right? Um, and then it kind of goes down from there. Dash and KO both won eight. Uh, Dash being up there makes sense. I think Dash is a natural, like, semi counter to a lot of the meta. Does really well into Guardian. Um, has a decent matchup in the Dromai. It's very flexible. So it made, that makes sense. KO with its power level also makes sense. Dromai, you know, kind of proven a lot of people, including myself, wrong on how good the deck still is, even in this high popper meta along with Victor and Bravo. It's like all of these right here made a lot of sense, right? They made complete sense. Uh, the Kano is surprising. I thought Kano would be somewhere like here, like where Kasai and Dorithia have made like five, six wins. Um, some really good Kano players. So that was definitely the biggest surprise here. Another one, honestly, was Dorinthia. I know Dorinthia is very good, and I think Dorinthia is on par with Kasai, but I was expecting just a lot of Warrior players to just play Kasai, to be honest, not play Dorinthia. So because of that, uh, Dor Dory was a really big surprise for me. Kasai, honestly, I thought Kasai was going to have more wins. Um, I thought she would be, like, up here uh, in between, like, Dromai and Ko, but her only being five, maybe it's because of Kano, because Kasai does not want to see Kano. It's pretty much a free win for Kano for the most part. Uh, not a good day for Kasai. She has to really go crazy. It was nice seeing Katsu uh, get four wins, so not too bad for a deck that is considered unplayable right now, uh, kind of being in the middle of the meta, so to speak. Um, Azalea and Prism. Azalea is the one that really, I think, uh, kind of put people, I think a lot of people were wrong about, not in a bad way. It's just a lot of people thought Azalea was going to be really good. And I kept saying, like, in this heavy Guardian meta and Dromai meta, like it's just really hard to pilot Azalea through that field every single round and win out an event. So this makes sense to me. Um, Prism getting three wins is really cool. Uh, really enjoyed seeing that. Really um, happy to see her start to get piloted well. Um, I thought she'd be borderline unplayable in this meta, but I think pilot skills really starting to, to show 
a lot of great pilots on Prism. They're using that Merciful Retribution to get things in Soul when you pop their, their stuff and then be able to turn on Air Edition and things like that. Um, Phi even weighing a couple is pretty nice to see, even though Phi is in kind of a rough spot right now. And then we eked it out. Uziri winning two makes sense. Um, and then Bolton, Reinar, Levaya, and Vincent getting one. Levaya ended up getting a win from Obogsley. I'm pretty sure that he that is the win they're registering. And I'll link his video down below so you can go watch it. Uh, really, really cool to see Levaya win a road to nationals. So the heroes that didn't win, poor Arachne. Uh, but that's expected, to be honest, in this Guardian Jeremiah meta. does makes complete sense. Betsy, I highly doubt Betsy was even very well represented. Most people are on Victor or Bravo if you're playing Guardian. If people play Betsy, it was just because they love the hero. Um, I highly doubt it just had, even had the representation enough to maybe even get out a win. Dash, IO, and Max, both in kind of weird spots. They're not bad decks, but they're not good decks in this format. Max did get top four from Eric Kemp at our local, one of our local RTNs. Merrick's an amazing mech player. Obviously, he's won a calling at one of the Pro Tours on OG Dash, so he knows his way around the mech, mech class. Was able to get top four with Max. Um, Olympia, uh, Riptide, Tegavosin, and Viscerai. So these heroes are still looking to get a win um, in the upcoming weeks. Which one of these heroes I think could sneak a win? I think I think out of all of these, I really think all these are going to struggle to sneak a win. But if I had to pick one that would maybe sneak a win, it would either be Max. Um, probably Max is probably the most likely to sneak a win just because I think the hero out of all those is in the best spot. But overall, really good. 76 total events, you know, two-thirds of the hero pool, um, even a little bit more, uh, got a win, which is really nice to see. And I'm really excited to see what happens to Kano in week two because you already know people are going to start teching for Kano now. They're going to put AB2, AB3, maybe even Oasis in their sideboards. And we'll see if Kano can still perform through that. Uh, Kano, to me, is a flash-in-the-pan type hero, not because of their power level, but because it, they do best when people aren't expecting them. Uh, I don't see Kano ever being a deck to just stay until they get more support. Uh, that just stays at the top of the meta just because it's the, one of the easier decks to tech into, but sometimes Kano just does Kano things. So I saw some people saying that the deck, the hel it makes the game unhealthy. I don't agree with that. I think the meta is very healthy right now. I think this is the healthiest meta we've had. I think a lot of Flesh and Blood players, both from the top to, you know, just normal, like, you know, local, regional level players are used to the old school Flesh and Blood where we had one or two stupid, powerful decks that, everyone knew was good and that we would test into and that it, it was kind of a solved meta, right? Like you will play these two or three decks if you're trying to win. And then maybe you have a counter pick here and there. And a lot of players like that because it's easy. It's easier to test into and it makes sense. This meta, you don't know what to play, right? Like literally everybody from here, in my opinion, everybody from here up, right? All of these heroes in blue, are decks that you could reasonably take to an event and it would make sense. And he, and you can still even take these some of these and it would make sense, obviously. But these decks, I think, are the ones where any of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decks you could take to an event right now and I'd be like, okay, they're trying to win, right? Um, even Azalea, you could probably put in that. Prism, I, I know Prism won, but it takes a really skilled pilot to do that. Um, but these decks right here, you could even say like, you know, that's literally 10 out of, what, 26 of the heroes we have or some. So I think we're in a super healthy meta. I'm really excited to see how week two kind of changes with, uh, you know, people teching for Kano, you know, maybe a little bit more, um, you know, people in week two, I, I feel like is a week where the people who won will play maybe decks that they just want to play since they already qualified. And then the people who didn't win maybe get cold feet a little bit and swap a deck and, like, try to do something. So I think in week two you'll see decks in, like, this range right here specifically go up a lot. Um, all of them will go up. And then you'll see others go down because people will swap into this deck range in order to try to eke out a win to be qualified for Nats. So... Overall, really excited about it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Everyone has a different opinion on the meta, on what happened. Um, but it's nice to see Kano get their time in the sun. They should. Uh, I'm glad every different hero is getting a little bit of time. But, yeah, hopefully you all have a good rest of your week. Stay safe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not, it's totally fine. Go to another Flesh and Bug creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And, yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.